what I want to do today is kind of go over some form again, um, show you some reference. Just again, this is like super, super simple, but just so you guys are thinking kind of just, you know, where the connections are, um, the body, you know, the torso. I don't think I ever told you guys this, but my training is um, I went through art school as an illustrator and then jumped on the computer, started modeling, and, and then I actually started sculpting later on, like traditional sculpting. So my background really is, is drawing and, and painting. And so, you know, I've taken hours and hours of, of figure drawing classes, and, and so that's why I tend to refer back to these. But if you look at just the basic forms, you know, this is kind of a box with a kind of smaller top on, and then this is another, you know, rectangle and, and cubes. So looking at your figure's basic form, you know, when you get down to the arms, this is a little more musculature, and and uh, but just looking at how the muscles are formed and the different planes of the muscles, uh, most of your stylized characters are going to have that, but it's just something that, you know, keep in mind, planes of the head, because a lot of the times, you know, you get these 2D drawings, and I'll show you my character that, you know, they definitely don't follow these typical planes, and so you kind of have to, and if they do on one side, they may not do it on the other side, and so you got to remember, you know, symmetry in the forms on here. Landmarks, and this is a book by Andrew Loomis that I can I can post to you guys too. But just the different landmarks, you know, of of where those hit on the on the body of like here's your hip bone, you know, your clavicle hits here, your sternocleidomastoid right there, you know, the little indent for your for your elbow, looking at the calf muscle. So just all those things to kind of keep in mind as you're modeling. And again, stylized characters, it's you're still you have to think about the anatomy a little bit underneath it. You know, because often the 2D guys, they're just trying to make it really designy and look cool. And so when you start having to make it in 3D, you really have to start thinking more along the lines of, like, how does that form really fill out? You know, this is kind of the simple version of where we're at right now with our, our models. Um, looking at the front, you know, if you look at that cylinder, it's, it's pretty much like a cylinder. If you look at the back, it's got, you know, most people just totally carry this around. And, you know, the back's got that extra fold in there. Go to the raised hand. I was looking for some uh, material on the internet about uh -huh. uh, the human proportions. Yeah. And I haven't found anything very concrete. If you can uh, point us to some uh, books or something like that, that we will have. Definitely. I think that would be great. Okay. There's, there's two books that I highly recommend. One um, is still in print, and it's, it's by Stephen Peck, and it's uh, Anatomy for Artists. And I'll, I'll point his out. And the other one is from this Andrew Loomis book. And he was an illustrator in the 50s, but it, he was a really good teacher and instructional guy. And so he did a lot of like just breaking down the simple forms like this. Bridgman, George Bridgman is another one who's kind of classic, but his style is a lot more kind of loose drawing. And, but Loomis, this one's called Figure Drawing for All It's Worth. And it's got some really good proportional stuff into it that are kind of classic. So, um, but Emilio, I'll, I'll post those too. So, or at least links to the Loomis one, because somebody actually scanned the whole book in, and, and it's online that you guys can grab. So, and we're going to talk a little bit more about hands and feet. This is a really good one, just for like overall planes, and just even in the legs, like what we were talking about yesterday, that if you look at, you know, these aren't just simple tubes going all the way around, that, you know, they're elongated. Um, you know, if you look at the, the torso, the cross section there, that you've got, you know, that shape, that it's not a perfect cylinder. You know, maybe on the front, but definitely not on the back. We talked about last time, too, you know, the feet. And if you're just looking at basic forms, you know, here's the, you know, the upper side of the foot where it dives down. If you're looking at, you know, just at taking a cylinder, uh, a polygonal cylinder, you know, here's your basic outline of, of what um, that form should be doing. And, you know, you've got the angle here, you've got an angle here, you know, here's where all the, the toes would join. You've got the ankle bones here, which actually should be tilted a little bit. And, and then you've got the arch on the inside, uh, which, you know, they're showing on this one. Because basically that metatarsal bone comes from the ankle and attaches down to the, the toe, like that. So this has some really nice, just like simplified kind of toe shapes too. Typically... 
you know, like with Susan on Monster vs. Aliens, we really had to focus in on, on doing some detailed feet because she was 50 feet tall. And so if you have a, a regular size character besides Susan, you know, the foot, we actually had a, a stunt foot that was had a lot more detail to it that in some of the scenes where the character was like this big beside her foot, like almost as big as the cursor, that, uh, you know, we'd have to stylize that and, and finish that up, that detail off a lot more than a regular character who was just normal size. So again, you know, depending on what, what the character is being used for, you may have to focus on some more detail. So hence kind of the research in like, oh, what does the foot look like?